We in the classical musical world are remembering the great composer George Crumb, who just passed away last week on February 6, 2022, at the age of 92. He was a giant in the modern music world. Um, he really pushed the envelope in terms of extended techniques and uh, musical sounds. And so I really want to take the time to just talk about some of the things that made him unique. I'm Crystal Thomas, a classical concert pianist, and I talk about classical music, classical piano, tips, techniques techniques, performance strategies, and things of that nature. If you enjoy content like that, please be sure to subscribe and also turn on the notifications by hitting the bell and selecting the word all so that you are notified when I upload another video. When one thinks of 20th century music and the avant-garde, surely George Crumb comes to mind. And it's interesting because I remember studying him uh, in school when we read the Burkholder a History of Western Music. And he was really one of those that we dove deeply into in terms of looking at his techniques, his approach to instrumentation and the use of instruments. And so uh, it's really interesting to see the impact that he had on the musical world. We truly appreciate his inventiveness, um, his innovation, and uh, definitely being able to see some of his compositions and his writing even while he was still alive um, and being able to follow through in terms of his progress and the direction that he was going with his compositions. In his pieces, George Crumb made use of extended techniques and also really taking those instruments and using them in ways that were not used before, or even putting in objects into his pieces that were normally not used when you think about traditional classical music. So for example, when we look at his piece, Ancient Voices of Children, you notice that he includes interesting instruments and objects in the piece, including a toy piano, a musical saw, prayer stones, as well as Japanese temple bells. And also the musicians are even asked to speak and whisper and even yell at times throughout the piece. And there are also other special effects that were included, such as putting uh, different pieces of paper into the harp or creating special effects through the piano by striking the piano strings with a chisel. Or we can even consider his piece, Black Angels, 13 Images from the Dark Land. And in that piece, Crumb depicts the horrors of the Vietnam War by creating some eerie sounds by using the instruments in a unique way. So one of the things is that he incorporated an amplified uh, string instruments, and he also had uh, things such as the violin playing on uh, the wrong part of the bow strings, and also, you know, putting a lot of weight on the strings so that it creates kind of the, sh the shrieking sort of sound. And in his piece, Black Angels, he even included crystal glasses filled with different levels of water to create different pitches. Another piece that Crumb composed was Echoes of Time and the River, and that actually won a Pulitzer Prize for music. And that was in the year of 1968. And that piece is interesting because in the score, it actually asked for the musicians to move about the stage, um, actually on stage and off stage, in different patterns and in different directions. And so that was a unique aspect of that piece as well. And finally, I want to point out one more piece, which is the Macrocosmos. And that piece is actually a four volume work, with the first two volumes being written for amplified piano, the third volume being written for two amplified pianos as well as percussion, and then the fourth volume being written for piano forehands, amplified piano forehands. And that piece is interesting because there's a lot going on in there. In those volumes throughout, there are moments where George Crumb asked for the pianist to whisper, to speak, to yell um, in different moments of the piece, and as well as using the amplification to create extreme dynamic levels, such as, you know, four times piano and four uh, times the forte levels that you would normally see in a traditional piece. Another thing that you notice in the first piece of the Macrocosmos, Volume 1, is that George Crumb asked for a light metal chain to be laid across the bass strings. And so as you're playing the piano and you're playing those notes, the vibrations in the strings cause the metal chain to move, which would then create different effects and different unique sounds in the piece.
And lastly, I want to point out that in his macrocosmos, George Crumb created this very beautiful, visually appealing way of notating the musical scores, right? Instead of using the traditional staff um, straight across the page, he created different designs with the musical notes. And it was still playable and performable uh, by the pianist, but it's, it's a piece of art when you actually look at the musical notes on the page. So for example, in the Macrocosmos Volume 1, Piece 8, you have the magic circle of infinity. So you'll notice that the notes on the page are written in a circle. Also, you'll notice that in Volume 1, Piece 12, you have the spiral galaxy. So you'll notice that the notes are written and placed in a beautiful spiral pattern. And then another example is in Volume 2, Piece 12, you have a piece that's in the shape of a peace sign. And the title of that movement is On Use Day. I mean, what more can you ask for? You have music paired with beautiful art. And this was one of the first times that we saw music written in such a way, in such a fashion. And with that, we appreciate George Crumb and all of his innovations and the, just the way that he was able to contribute to modern music and classical music and to expose everyone to thinking outside of the box and to include objects and use instruments in a way that uh, they had never been used before, as well as going beyond just the typical way of putting the musical notes on the page, really bringing that visual art to the table as well. If you learned something new and you enjoyed this content, please be sure to check out the other videos that I have on my channel, as well as uh, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, as well as turn on the notifications so that you are aware of when I upload another video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.